Yo, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the kingdom. You already know it's the king speaking to you. And welcome to part 35 of Disco Elysium. Alright everybody, so when we wrapped up last time, we we stepped up, up in here. Uh, I don't know how we how we missed this. Like, what were we doing? So, but, I don't know. Let's, let's see what's going on. This tray is full of dice. Colorful polyhedral dice. Hundreds of them. The candy dispenser has been repurposed to contain thousands of dice. Well, she up here playing D and D. She part of the Hellfire Club, or he, or whatever it is. Hello. What does she? I'm Nia. A bird-like woman sits on a throne of tools with emerald light shining through her hair. Did you try knocking on my window? I must have missed you. I've been listening to my Milius. She taps on her headphones. So, what kind of die are you looking for? Could this be the malicious entity? Perhaps it's wise to go along with this masquerade for now. She's got a direct view to the backyard. You should interrogate her about the lynching. Huh. Hold on. What do you mean by milieu? Yes, a milieu is like a call-in station. You need a two-way radio to access one. That's why I have these. She pats the headphones on the table. Mostly, they just teach you to swear in different languages. But some of the stations can be quite interesting. I was so absorbed, I must have missed you knocking. You must have me confused with someone else. I haven't knocked on your window. Then how did you get inside? By the south entrance? You know what? It doesn't even matter. What matters is that you're finally here. Let's talk dice. Did you have something specific in mind? Why are you asking me about dice? I'm a novelty dice maker. Tell me the name of your role-playing system and I'll make the die you need. That's why you're here, yes? Dungeons and Dragons! As she speaks, her bone-like fingers fiddle with a ring. Her bones light, but her hands strong. Role-playing games? You know the one made by Fortress Accident. Does that count? Sure, I like role-playing games, and I need some dice. Very good. My rate is 10 real per set. Unless you want something really unusual. Take a look around and see if there is any particular stone you want to use. The walls around her are covered with rows of precious stones and minerals. It almost looks as if the stones and dice are a natural part of the room, growing out of the shells like stalagmites. This person means you, or no one else, absolutely no harm. She will answer freely and honestly. Good. No falsehoods are present. She's a novelty dice maker and doesn't have anything to hide. Ask what you need. Okay, so that's two things in a row basically saying just ask her straight up because she'll tell me the answer. How did you become a dice maker? How did I become one? It was a business decision. I was a regular jeweler at first, but that's an unfocused field with too much competition. Some of my friends were role players. They asked me to make some polyhedral dice out of cobalt. That was my first order. I grew it from there. Do you like role-playing games yourself? Not especially. I like working with rare materials and a steady pay. And role-players as customers? They're nice people. Some of those nice people have big bucks to spend on novelty items. She's thankful for the security they provide her. Okay, I'd like to order a die from you. Of course. Tell me what you have in mind. Do you know the we're all in tethered setting? I want to die for that. Do you have any cursed dice? Tell me about your most extraordinary die. I'm sorry, I don't really know what I die I want. Just a normal die for me, very regular. I'm looking for something to help with my work. I actually need more time to think about it. What's that? Ah, yes. Fortress accident. It's too bad they never finished their game. The we're all on tethered die is a variation of a standard role-playing die. Only, instead of plants, it uses motives of ice and death. And loss, of course. What if she makes me dice and this ups my chances of everything that I do? Because you know when, when you have the percentage and there's the, it always shows the dice? What if having some real dice? It's like, you know, my, my chances go up now. Ice, death, loss. Sounds like you. If that would be a thing, I'd be so mad because I could have found her... 15 hours ago in the game. I'm thinking something made from alligator jawbone, cast in black resin. The reptile bone is as white as ice and dead as, well, death. 
For seven real, I could have it ready in eight hours. Eight hours? What's a standard role-playing die? Why do you need it to cast a Untreated resin? Untreated bone is porous and prone to chipping. Cast it in something hard like resin, though, and voila, it's perfect. Alright. Great. See you in eight hours, then. Was there anything else? Yeah. What do you know about the man who was lynched behind the whirling in rags? She loved me now. I bought something from her. Well, I will buy something from her. Nothing, really. I didn't know him. Who cares about the dead body? We might be dealing with a malignant entity here. The lieutenant looks at his notebook. Then, the woman under the large window. Your window looks directly onto the courtyard. You're saying you didn't see or hear anything unusual last Sunday evening? I'm sorry, detective, but as you know, I usually have my headphones on when I'm working. It shuts out most of the daily ruckus behind my window. What do you mean by the daily ruckus? Well, there's always something going on in the whirling's backyard. She stops to try and come up with an example. During daytime, there are usually those kids. And lately, I've been seeing a lot of drunk workers hanging about. Must be because of the strike. She's heard of the murder, but did not see it, sire. She's not sorry to disappoint you. Informing on someone in a murder investigation would intrude upon her focused existence. But I never saw anyone during that fateful Sunday night, I'm afraid. And you never took your eyes off the work to look out the window? I might have, but in this case, all I would have seen is my own reflection staring back from the darkness. It's really hard to make anything out in the yard when it's dark outside. Besides, I rarely get up to look out the window when I'm in the zone. Do you often work Sunday nights? It's an odd profession, making dyes for people. But I like it, and I prefer doing this to sitting at home. I see. Thank you for your answer. She nods. Anything else, officer? Um... Hey, where are we anyway? What is this place? We're inside the chimney of an old central furnace. It's strange, I know. She looks at the ruddy bricks that make up the walls. Even though they've been repainted, there are still signs of coal black soot here and there. But when I arrived here, all the other rooms were taken, so I had to build myself a makeshift home. Besides, I don't really have to pay any rent here, so that's a plus. Plaisance was right. There's an entity living in the chimney. You should ask her about the curse. Create here. The lieutenant looks around the spacious room, ceiling fading in its shadows above. I've heard this place is cursed. Do you know what people call do you know that people called it the doomed commercial area? I've heard the stories, but I don't think those stories are true. Wait, how do you explain what happens to all those companies then? It's just capitalism. We only hear about tales of success, so it's often surprising to realize how many ventures actually fail. Pleasance is the one who sent me. She's convinced that the place is swarming with malicious energies. Pleasance, the bookshop lady? I've heard that her business is doing rather well. Have the energies spared her somehow? Pleasance is a wise woman. She has Semenese trinkets protecting her against the curse. Ah, the Semenese trinkets, of course. She nods as if this explains everything. But it doesn't. This is merely a sarcastic response. All oh, right. But it's not just the bookstore that's still up and running. What about the whirling in racks? Some people say it's part of the building complex. Hold on, the whirling is part of the doomed commercial area? You could say so. Both houses were built at the same time and under the east of the Commerce Central project. Yes, but it's still a separate building. The malicious energies can't reach there. No, the whirling isn't doing well either. Its waitresses took off and customers have trouble paying bills. You're right, the whirling doesn't really look cursed. And then there is me. <sighs> she sighs, looking at her messy work table. All kinds of tools lie there scattered, from knives to carving files to wire cutters. I've been here for 14 years, selling novelty dice to role-playing enthusiasts. Not exactly a million rail business idea, yet somehow I've survived despite the talk of malicious energies. Strange, isn't it? It's because she's in cahoots with the demons. Ah. Maybe it's just because she's so talented that she's been able to woo the curse. Placence thinks it's because you, you're the source of it, a malignant entity. 
malignant entity? What does that even mean? <laughs> Some kind of sorceress? What about you, officer? Do you think I'm the malignant entity? The jig is up. The she-demon knows you've uncovered her true The she-demon. Can't trust her. Time has come to face the source. Fear not, for the forces of the universe are supporting you in this psychic quest. I think it still might be you that's causing this. Narrow your eyes very mysteriously. I'm starting to see that there is no curse, only business decisions and natural market fluctuations. Honestly, I'm still not sure. This place is a puzzling place. This world is a puzzling place. Exactly. Truth is always so disappointingly mundane and boring. But I'm glad we got this sorted out. Anything else I can help you with today? That's all she has to say on the subject. She's been thorough and truthful, as far as we could see. Raisons is not going to like what you have to tell her. What the hell? Why hasn't her business failed? Do you know what happened to other tenants? Everyone else was gone. More or less. Are you interested in anyone specific? Oh, quite a lot of them spring to mind. There used to be a hair salon here, right? Yes, I think it was called Androgynous Orlando or something similar. They weren't a big hit around here. Turns out that working class men don't like genderless haircuts. They're scared of that word. You wouldn't like it either. The others would laugh at you. A bit of experimenting every now and then isn't bad. It's not about the haircut. It's about the confidence. What's wrong with a bit of experimenting? The customer should have been more open-minded. I would never let anyone androgynous touch my hair, not even if my life depended on it. I guess I'm a simple man, I don't really have opinions on hairstyles. I guess, it just wasn't the time yet. She tucks a strand of hair under, under the headscarf. What happened to the gym? It wasn't merely a gym, it was Artemiteps Boxing Club. A community project created to steer at-risk use away from drugs and crime. And who was Artemite? A kind man, from Zemsk. I heard he had some trouble with the law when he was younger, and that's why he wanted to start the gym, as his way of giving back. Maybe that's what Kuno needs, a community-centric boxing club. Hmm, Kuno? Who's Kuno? Sort of the king around here. He's a little ginger gremlin who likes to defile dead bodies. Indeed, who is Kuno? Your guess is as good as mine. Oh yes, you mean the kid with the sailor's mouth? Yes, I've heard him yelling profanities in the backyard. She looks out of the window. It's oddly quiet there at the moment. I think it would take more than a gym to help that kid. How did that community project work out? Judging from the kids I've met so far, it didn't really work, did it? It didn't. If anything, it made the youth situation in Martinez even worse. At some point, someone started a rumor that the punching bag downstairs was full of amphetamines. Mm. It's not really full of that. No one would store their drugs like that. Eventually, the coalition took away the funding and the club went bankrupt. This was a few years ago. It's gotten much more peaceful around the plaza ever since. What's up with the broken windows? Oh, this one's a mess. <sighs> there used to be a company that promised to repair windows 24 hours a day. What could go wrong with this one, right? Turns out... The business was actually set up as a front for an illicit group that was producing snuff milius. Who would have guessed? Hmm, what's the snuff milia? Trust me, you don't want to know. <laughs> and they never cleaned up the debris either. Now it's just littering the hallway and I have no idea how to get rid of it on my own. Cool, very cool about the debris. But what's the snuff milia? It's a shame about those windows, I'm not even going to ask about the milia. Encyclopedia wants to know. It's a Sub Rosa radio station that broadcasts real murders with real victims. Some Trust Encyclopedia more than Half Life. Nothing changes in her tone as she says that, as if it's just another piece of information to lay out for the world. Don't worry, the ICP has a separate division that deals exclusively with unlicensed Sub Rosas. This isn't our problem. Good luck with that. It's not easy catching those perpetrators. Then she lets the thought go. Did someone here make stuffed animals? I saw mounts lying around. You mean Mr. Fabron, the taxidermist? No, he mostly just did drugs. Mm. Anything else? 
I found creepy mannequins. There used to be a fashion atelier here, but I have forgotten the head designer's name. They were doing well for a couple of years, until the insect rights activists came. Insect rights activists? What in the name of... I didn't know insects had any rights or activists. Mm-hmm. The atelier produced a certain collection that used chitin among the materials. Apparently chitin is made in the Occident, where it's extracted from beetle wings. And you know how all kinds of political movements are big in the Occident. The activists shut down the biggest chitin supplier, which of course caused the price to skyrocket. And, naturally, all the most fashionable tastemakers refused to be seen in chitin from then on. The atelier went bankrupt before they could finish the collection. I'm glad there's someone took care of the little guys. I like insects. But insects don't have any brains or feelings. They got what they deserve, making clothes out of beetle wings is a terrible idea. Hmm, really? Anyway... Poor guy. Suddenly, you get a feeling that insects are important to the case somehow. It's hard to say why. What's with the rotor blades and skis? Damn, there is a lot. They were made by a company called Slipstream. After they pivoted from making rotor blades to skis, their chef executive took off on a vacation with all their money. She rests her chin on her hand with an impish smile. Honestly, I think it's quite funny. I think he's still sending out holiday transmissions from Tulula or Tiumotiri or Hashkor or wherever he is. Interesting. What do these transmissions say? That's illegal. Running off with company's money like that? Why hasn't he been arrested? The usual, I imagine. That he's been thinking up all kinds of new business plans and can't wait to get started on them just as soon as he returns. Her smile widens before she sees the lieutenant's face behind you. Men like that are a curse. The lieutenant is stern. Sure, but Slipstream is history now. All their remaining assets got seized by the bailiffs in 47. I have no idea why those skis and blades are still lying around in the house. Not much use now, I guess. They were just the props. Why return them? Maybe you could make a sword out of one. No, wait, forget it. It would take too long. I found a strange machine. Fortress Accident, the radio game studio. She closes her eyes as some remnant of a memory lights up her face. She liked them. They were an interesting bunch. We talked about role-playing systems every now and then. Once, I even saw two of them get into fisticuffs over Wiro. They certainly took their work very seriously, even if they seemed to be chronically liberal with their schedules. What do you mean liberal? What happened? The usual. They ran out of money and couldn't get the project done on time. What went wrong? Well, I did hear them talking at times. She looks at the hallway as if she can still hear them chit-chat behind her curtains on a cigarette break. They seem to believe they were historical individuals on some grand quest. She sounds almost mocking when she says that. From what I've seen so far, the project did look quite impressive. Really? They must have been on a gigantic ego trip. Yes, but when the money started to run out, they just began to complain a lot about capitalism. You know, how the markets are rigged to keep out new businesses and so on. In the end, they just didn't get it done. They didn't have enough willpower to produce something truly historic. And to show up to work on time. She's right. Showing up to work on time is important. Well, showing up to work on time is incredibly hard. That's too bad. I would have supported them. The project looked great. You're right, they should have just tried harder. They had everything needed to succeed. Still, not everyone is going to make it. That's the nature of the game. The result is... 1. On a 20-sided die. The dice is black and filled with little silvery flakes, like snowfall. Anything else? Um, there was a terrifying taxiderm bear in the cellar. Oh boy, the fabled Revo Show ICT. You're in for a treat here. She smiles and leans closer, hands on her knees like a stand-up comedian ready to tell a story. The place was owned by two guys who had some rather innovative ideas about marketing. The bear was one of them. Now ask me about their other ideas. And she loving it. Indeed. What were the other ideas? Alright, what about the other ideas? There was really just one. 
and it involved picking out the prettiest girls in the neighborhood and paying them 20 cents per hour to man the booth. And by man the booth, I mean slump behind the counter with a face that could maim you if you ever dared to disturb their bored magazine browsing. She leans back, disapproving. Sounds like she really didn't like those girls. Frita does the same thing. I know a girl just like that. She works in Frita as a cashier and she's not particularly friendly. What did they expect? 20 cents per hour is dog's pay. I'm surprised they showed up to work at all. That's an award-winning idea. How else do you choose people around here? I don't have an opinion on employing teens. I just want to know, did it work out for the business? Employing silky teenage girls is a widespread practice, yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, they always come in packs. I'm talking about acne-ridden girlfriends and gorilla-like boyfriends loitering near the shop. At least that's what happened with Ravishow ICT. And they already had the bear. She closes her eyes as if remembering something painful. What about the bear? The bear. She repeats, pressing thumbs into her temples like trying to suppress a headache. It didn't work out? Of course not. The bear was terrifying. No one wants ice cream guarded by a hostile apex predator. To make matters worse, the fridge didn't work too well either, and half the ice cream came out malformed and partially melted. Eventually, Ravishow Ice City lost the price war to its rival, Glass A 5000. Glass A 5000 sold caramel sundaes for only 5 cents a piece, out of regular fridges. It's the market doing its job. I'm sure the bear was doing its best. The bear was scary. Every time I saw that bear, I felt scared like it could become alive any moment now. I killed the bear. You, you did what? She rolls her swivel chair an inch closer to you, unsure whether she heard you right. I had to kill the bear to become the bear. I murdered it with my own bare hands as I laid it to rest. It's my trophy now. I unplugged the fridge to help Ravishaw Ice City cut their losses. Ugh, of course they left it plugged in. Even in death, the bear is costing them money. The taxidermist who made it said it was his vision beast. He said he met his vision beast while high on desiccants. He called it Megatherian. Sounds cool. Scary. But cool. Why is everyone doing drugs in this place? Even the taxidermist? Megatherian? Megatherian. A mega wild beast. What's a mega wild beast? It's an imaginary beast that guides you through life by telling you to do more drugs, mostly. I don't do drugs. I do drugs. I've got a vision beast myself. I don't have a comment on drugs. Understandable. You shouldn't do them. You're a police officer after all. Anyway, now you know the story of the fallen ice cream empire. She seems almost sad finishing the story. Some dust beams swirl in the morning light. Her eyes follow it idly. It's all sparkling embers under the window. Anything else? Another failed business, perhaps? I've been here for a long time. I found the building's intercom, but it's not working. Oh, right. I hope you didn't try to ring me. I think none of those doorbells work, including mine. I'm still in the middle of connecting the wires. Sorry about the confusion. The doorbell with the empty name card must belong to her, then. So you're telling me that the doorbell with the empty name card was yours? That's right. I haven't even written my name there. As I said, it's quite useless right now. It doesn't work yet. I was wondering about the whirling rut and rags. Is it part of the same building complex? You could say so. Both houses were built at the same time and under the East Delta Commerce Center project. That explains why you can call the whirling from the intercom. Albeit, I doubt that anyone responds. If the whirling is part of the same building, then it's part of the Doom commercial area. The darkness of this place is there, too. I saw a name. East Delta Pinball on the door? Doorbell? Right. It used to be a gaming arcade. This is an ancient failure. Before my time. I'm not surprised, however. My advice? Don't base your business on a fad. Hypnotism, floreography, trick track, especially pinball. Agreed. Pinball is the worst. His disdain for pinball could not be clearer. 10 o'clock, call library. Strange thing happened when I tried calling a company named Slipstream SCA. Someone answered. It can't be true. They don't work here anymore. They've been gone for years. Are you sure it was Slipstream SCA? Was it a woman? 
Maybe it was Playsons from the bookstore. First, it wasn't Playsons. I know her and would have recognized her voice. She said she was from Tricentennial Electrics. Tricentennial Electrics? There's a moment before she recognizes the name. It used to be a major electric company 100 years ago. Are you sure it wasn't just some kids playing a prank on you? No, it was something else. It was eerie. It was too real to be just a prank. Either we're dealing with a professional actress or whatever happened, keep your cool. It's probably better to admit that it was a harmless prank. You're right. I probably just got made fun of. No, it was something else, something eerie. May have been some sort of rare electrical anomaly. Oh, the kids these days. We were just one of them, and now they're terrorizing us. No solidarity. I have more questions about the building. Sure, I'm listening. I have no more. Wait, I have more questions about the intercom. I'm pretty sure it still doesn't... Sure, oh, okay. I'm listening. We're done. Actually, I had other questions. Good. I hope it clarified things a bit. What well, else? we're not doing this. So, leave. Alright, well. Determine where the shot came from. Check, uh... Check boardwalk. Check island. Uh, report back to Placence. Pick up dice. I gotta come back for that. Alright. So, let's go back and talk to Placence. Let her know that uh, the place actually isn't haunted. I'm sure she'll get a kick out of that. She can take those curse charms down, live her, live her best life, and everyone will be okay. What have you found? And also, do buy the books. There may be teachings in them. I talked to the entity you told me about. Her name is Nea, and she's a novelty dice maker. A novelty dice maker? Well, spit it out. Why does she need the dice? For some kind of sorcery? Sometimes they use the ankle bones of sheep. She's not a sorceress or some malicious entity. She's a businesswoman like you. I don't understand. If it's not her, then where is the source of the doom? How did she explain the curse? She looks perplexed. The narrative she's built herself, it does need tearing down. She's squeezing on the pendant too tight. A drop of blood in her palm. Just don't say you don't have any answer yet. The uncertainty is killing her. To hell with it. Perchance you ought to just lie, sire. You've come this far. You know how to end it. There is an entity behind the entity. She says there is no curse because there are too many inconsistencies. She said it's just capitalism. Bankruptcy is a quirk of our economic system. I can lie. The source is in the taxidermist shop. He became involved in arts darker than taxidermy and brought the void spirits down upon the place. Honestly, I don't have an answer yet. There are still leads to be followed. There's another entity, more malignant, pulling the strings of Martinez. Perhaps in my travels, I'll cross paths with it. Wait, what? The entire economic system is cursed? Oh, God. This is a lot for her to pass. I'm afraid that only revolution can help you. Yes, the system must be cleansed of immigrant labor. It's true. We live in a precarious world. Nothing ever turns out right. You need to get used to chaos. What I meant was, I found the source of the doom. Forget about the economy thing. This is a lot for her to parse. Should I not say this one? You found a way to fix our entire economic system? Or are you talking about the building? Yes, I performed the ancient 70s the spelling rites. This commercial area is doomed no more. Yeah, I despooked it. The curse is definitely gone. I'm afraid that I can only identify the source, but you have to call some other experts to lift the curse. Eh, yeah, fuck it, let's just... Of course. I trust my Semenese wards and charms kept you safe while you perform the ancient rites. She looks at you with sudden admiration. Yeah, we'll just make her believe All it. All that matters is that the energies are retreating. I can already feel the curse lifting. It will be a long time until we're fully free of it, of course. But still, thank you, officer. Truly, you've brought a better psycho emanation to this humble bookstore, and that's no small achievement. Yeah, no problem. She so badly wants this to be over. She would have believed anything. It will only last a day or two. A week tops. Then her mood will sour and she will feel the curse again. All right, then. All's well that ends well. Should we return to our ordinary lives? Yep. Cool. Well, that's out of the way. We can level up. Um. 
do the shivers. That's done. Let's go, uh... Oh, it's auto-saving cool. I was just about to save anyway. Let's go call the library. It's time. This is Precinct 57. How many? Hold on, officer. I've got Central Jamrock Public Library on the line, and I've already introduced you to their librarian. Connecting the call in two. One. Yes, this is Central Jamrock Public Library here. How can I help you, officer? He sounds worried, yet ready to assist. This is how people get when the police call. I'm looking for any information that you can provide on Billy Mejon, a reader. Billy, Billy Mejon, you said. Give me a moment, I'll have to check our database. He puts down the receiver. Yes, hello, are you still there? I found Billy Mejon's home address, is that alright? No phone number, unfortunately. They're too poor to have a phone line. Yes, home address is fine. Here we go, sir. Rue de saint Gislaine, 33B, apartment number 20. It's in Martinez, I believe. Capeside Apartments, it says. That's all. That's where the smoker on the balcony lives, isn't it? Oh, okay. Do you have any inf other information on Billy Major? It says here that they returned their last book just a few days ago, but I wasn't at work that day. Do you know someone who was? Marie? Marie? Do you remember a reader named Billy Majon? They returned a Tibalt book the other day. You hear someone answer from afar. Yes, it, it was my colleague Marie. Uh, she said that it was Billy's husband who returned the book. He also asked for this new sci-fi release, Lowe's Radio City 87. But we don't have it yet. Good. You have a name now. So Billy Majon is a woman, not a man. How did your colleague know that it was her husband? Marie knows Billy. She's been working here longer than me. Sometimes her husband returns some books for her. Wait a second. Was it a... A man or woman? Where the smoker on the balcony? Was the smoker a man or woman? I can't remember. Did she kill her husband? And then goes for a little drink later. On the lookout. Do you know the husband's name? Sorry, no. Marie only knows him by sight. Can Marie describe to me what the husband looked like? Marie! A moment passes. She said it was an older man, and that she's pretty sure he'd had a drink or two the last time she saw him. What was he wearing? Uh, one second. The librarian turns away from the phone again and relays the question. Sorry, Marie wasn't really paying any attention to that? Of course not. Thank you. That's all from me. I have no other questions. Happy we could help. Goodbye, officer. The librarian hangs up and the call gets redirected back to the station with a soft click. Anything else you need from me? Nope. 57, over and out. Her voice Did disappears. Account, you see a Goodbye. I know she didn't go kill her husband over a library book. Mm. 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 Not on my watch. Go to Billy Majon's apartment, deliver the bad news in the apartment building with the smoker up here. Come on. Come on, Kim. Wait, what the hell? Oh, why did it look like there was two people falling at the bottom? A weathered brown door. The number reads 20. Something smells good. Soup along yo. The lieutenant motions to you to go ahead and knock. This is the door. You already know it's the right door. This is going to be so hard. Get yourself together. It's just police work. Hold on, Kim. We should discuss this before we move on. What should we expect? You're right. Let's do this true. He looks at the apartment door and lowers his voice a bit. You hear some light footsteps and what appears to be a daily weather forecast playing on the radio. We have our first preliminary identification. In all likelihood, the deceased is the husband of Billy Mejon. We need to confirm this, as well as deliver the death notification to Billy herself. Now. Delivering a death notification is never an easy task. There's a reason why it's often called the most stressful part of our job. This is why it's usually done in pairs. You got this. I'll be monitoring reactions, ready to act if necessary. Do you have any advice on how to tell her he's... Dead? Just don't say that you know how they feel. You don't. Good advice. What if I don't want to do this? Yes, it's hard. 
But there is no easy way to handle this information. It just has to happen as soon as possible. Kim, I don't want to do this. Let's turn around. All right, I think I'm ready. The lieutenant motions towards the door. Hello? Who is it? A voice calls from the other side of the door. And someone turns down the radio. Look at the lieutenant first. He gives you a short, encouraging nod. Is this Billy Mejon's home? This is the police. Please, open the door. The police? A moment, please. Give us a moment. You hear shuffling inside. Give us. Tidy enough. Nervously. There's fear in her voice. Mm -hmm. Come in. The door is open. Door is open, huh? Hmm. Door is open. Let's have a look around. We'll have a looky loo. Packages of humanitarian and macaronis. Some leftovers kept warm on a stovetop. Smells like buckwheat and onions in here. Windows covered in old newspaper clippings. Hello, detective. Can't they afford curtains? A chalk drawn height chart for children's growth over the years. Textbook for high school, mathematics, trigonometry mostly. The clock is ticking away with an old cheerfulness. It's ticking makes you anxious. It rings hollow in the room. Posters of contemporary pop stars adorn the walls. Alright. It's you from the book stand. Did you come to bring my cockatoo back? She smiles nervously before the smile vanishes from her face. I was wondering where you went. I don't think I introduced myself properly. I'm Billy. Would you like something to drink? Tea? Lemonade? We're out of coffee. The lieutenant has taken off his foggy glasses and is busy cleaning them in his handkerchief. For now, you're on your own here. He must feel vulnerable without his glasses. Is this why he's letting you take the lead? Thanks, but I'm alright. Not really here for the tea. Is this about Victor, my husband? Is he in some kind of trouble again? I can come pick him up in the station if that's what. She stops, her eyes trying to read answers from your face. Keep it together. You don't want your body language to tell her the news. Sorry, I'm rambling. It's just that Victor often gets into all kinds of trouble. So, how can I help you? How about some small talk before you break the news? Definitely no small talk. This isn't the time or place. Um. Damn. So, how have you been? I noticed you were cooking something. You live here with Victor, your husband, right? You've done this before. Just keep your focus. That's right, 97%. We had everything going for us there. God, do I just say he's dead like that? Ma'am, I'm very sorry to say, but your husband, Victor Mejon, was found dead on the Martinez boardwalk. What did you say? A great and terrible spike. The blood freezes in her veins. Your husband, Victor Mejon, is dead. I'm very sorry for your loss, ma'am. Oh. She touches her neck, eyes pale like pearls in seawater. Oh. But he was just... She looks at the kitchen table where two cigarette butts are still in the tray. But he was just here. Alive. We understand this comes as a huge shock. I want you to know that me and my partner are here for you if you have any questions. Take your time, ma'am. What happened to him? She turns to you. Her neck and cheeks are covered with the red blotches. Her double chin is shaking. It's still early to say, but at first glance it seems like he slipped and hit his head. It was an accident. He fell through the hole in the boardwalk and hit his head. Was he drunk? Alcohol may have played a role, yes. We don't know yet, but we will let you know when the results arrive. I see. And you just found him there, lying in the cold. How long had he been there? If you say two days, maybe, it will be etched in her mind forever. It's hard to say at this point. It could have been long. Two days, maybe? She blinks, eyes welling up with tears as her hand starts searching for something from the pockets of her dress. Here. 
The lieutenant takes out the handkerchief and offers it to the woman. She nods and slowly wipes away her tears. Is there anyone we could call for you? A friend? A family member? Someone who could be here for you? No, no. I just need to tell my girls. The air gets sucked out of her lungs suddenly. It burns like acid. God, should I call them? Should I tell them to come home? No. A day. Yes, they should know. Do you want us to call them and ask them here? No, take a day to recover. You'll be better prepared when they come home tomorrow. Good. That's probably the right thing. Thank you. She nods, but with a wretched expression. Just tell me, what do I need to do next? Where is he? Can I see him? We've taken him to the city morgue. The local coroner will be contacting you shortly to arrange the funeral. Here's his number in case you want to contact him earlier. He hands her a leaflet with the morgue's contact information. A very good call. Is there anything else that the RCM could do for you? No, I'll call you if something comes up. I'm still... She rubs her face, runs her fingers over cheeks that have become numb. Thank you. Thank you for telling me. I'll call if... She runs out of breath. These are her last reserves of strength. Her muscles will give in soon. Already, she starts to shake. Again, I'm very sorry, ma'am. We should step outside and talk. Set the library card by her. Leave the room. You did well. The lieutenant says as soon as you've left the apartment. The balcony feels cool and quiet with a stunning view over the district. What now? I'll call the station when we're finished with the day and let them know the name of the deceased. That's it? What about Billy and our kids? That's it. We should get back to our case now that our duty here is done. They'll manage. They have to. It's not your place to live their lives. Right. This is closed then. Let's go. Cool. Finish that on up. Solvent. Solving cases. All right. Well, that's done. Uh, is that eight hours of filled at Friday at nine? So still got a long time before I can pick that stuff up. All right. Well, got some more more things completed. I think we're gonna wrap this video up right here. Thank you so much for coming through for part thirty-five. Hit some sub, some side quests. You know how we do. Uh, completed a couple joints. That's that's pretty good. So, so. Getting our backlog down before we fin continue looking for, for Ruby, who's out on the run. And, who knows, will we continue with side quest in 36 or are we going straight for Ruby? You have to come back and see. Peace.